ball. I'm not sure what it is, to be honest. Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're in Madrid, one of my favourite cities in the whole world. Let me show you around. As well as being the birthplace of international pop sensation Julio Iglesias, Madrid is also home to Spain's national airline, Iberia. Today I want to see if Iberia lives up to its truly awful reputation, so join me on this flight where things don't quite go to plan. So welcome to When is an Iberia A330 not an Iberia A330? After an average stay at the average Hilton Barajas Airport Hotel, I must say ladies and gentlemen, I'm in a bad mood. So I'm hoping that today's mystery ride on a randomly owned Airbus A330 back to London will cheer me up. Let's go and find out. First port of call is the excellent Iberia Terminal 4 Sasslight Lounge. I love this lounge because it's got nice hot food, premium complimentary alcohol, as well as great vistas across the whole airport. So on the moments in the sky, lounge index, it ticks all of the boxes and this lounge gets 5 out of 5. Morning folks, hope you're all well. Um, so yeah, I'm just in the Iberia Lounge uh, in Madrid, Terminal 4 Satellite, uh, just waiting for my wide body Iberia Airbus A330 back to Heathrow, the final flight of six. So had a really good time, uh, wide body weekend as we aptly named it. Um, all the Av geeks that I flew with went back last night on the 380 and but I just stayed down here in Madrid last night because I particularly wanted to get the Airbus 330 back tonight which completes the Iberia collection as far as YouTube goes, the, the Iberia wide body collection that is. So a couple of things to mention really on the Iberia A330, as I said there's a bit of a travel hack here and it's not going to blow your mind because it's not, it's not that massive but um, if you've got status with One World, so British Airways, Iberia etc, there is a slight travel hack which not many people know about on the Airbus A330. And when I canvassed a few of the Av geeks who I know who travel quite often, particularly the ones who know me well, I said, what do you know about the Airbus A330 Series 200 with Iberia? And invariably, uh, I got three main emotions back. One is, you'll hate it, Neil, because you're fussy. It's a flying pig. And don't bother flying on the A330 200 with Iberia because everything's broken. So. The emotions were generally negative from people who said don't bother, it's not a particularly nice aircraft. So if you've got one world status, you might not be aware that if you book with Iberia in economy on their short haul wide body routes, so typically between here and Heathrow, between here and Scandinavia, what they'll do at the time of booking is they'll let you book into premium economy for free, which is what I did on the Airbus 350 and you'll see that in the video. But what you might not know, and it's a very small piece of information that you might take advantage of, I do it quite a lot, is the A330-200 of Iberia doesn't have a premium economy cabin. So at the time of booking, if you've got status with One World, they'll book you straight into business class on this particular aircraft, which is why I want to see it today. Now the interesting thing about this travel hack is that although you're in a business class seat, Iberia goes out of its way to not give you a meal if you are travelling on an economy ticket. Now, that's fine. I'm not going to sit here and claim that I'm anybody special, despite the fact I've had one World Emerald for many years. I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm not that vain, really. So, 
they don't give you the meal and they go out of the way and it's always struck me as a bit odd because surely you would think you know, it must take more effort on Iberia's part to not give you the meal than to just say look we've got X number of people in the business class cabin let's just give you the meal because it's a long haul aircraft there's no cabin divider like you get in Club Europe on British Airways it's a fixed business class flatbed seat so yeah I mean flying with Iberia what can I tell you about flying with Iberia um, it lives up to its reputation <laughs> it's not great um, there's a few things I want to tell you about Iberia but we haven't really got the time today but I will share it with you in a future video maybe on the A350 video it's time for boarding and once again Iberia's random experience has caught me out what the hell is this just gone off so good afternoon it is a very pleasant very clear afternoon flying back up to Heathrow on well I'm not sure what it is to be honest <laughs> it's uh, in a typically random way that only Iberia does <laughs> well that only Iberia excels in we randomly are on board a level aircraft now <clears throat> this was originally supposed to be uh, an Iberia Airbus A330 Series 200 uh, with that travel hack I told you about earlier which was if you book in economy with status on one world they'll put you into business class and that hack does normally work but they've foiled me once again <laughs> because they've put this low-cost subsidiary aircraft onto the Heathrow route and we'll talk about that in a little while so the hack does work just not today. But what can I tell you about the level? Uh, not a lot, I don't know much about it. Uh, I believe it was set up a few years ago as a low-cost airline to compete with other major carriers around Europe, but they also have some long-haul aircraft as well, like this Airbus 330. Uh, from what I remember, they launched some European flights from one pence each, because I remember a few of the Avgeek people in our group got flights on them, but I believe quickly soon after, Level's short haul operation was massively retrenched from major airports around Europe because, as with all big airlines that set up low cost subsidiaries trying to compete with the likes of Ryanair and EasyJet, they soon realise it's not a licence to print money, of course. And British Airways tried it with Go a few years ago, and EasyJet eventually bought them. And I think just about every US carrier at some point has tried to launch a low cost spin off, and it's failed. Uh, but this one seems to keep going, although, like I said, I think it's long haul only now. Well, if they have short haul routes, it's just a handful of short haul routes around. Here. So I was quite surprised to see a level aircraft on what I thought was a prime route between here and London. And for those who don't know, uh, between Iberia and BA, you quite often see wide body aircraft on this route because of the cargo demands. And so naturally it attracts uh, av geeks like me <laughs> and others who like to fly around the world on as cheaply as possible on wide body aircraft and the Airbus 330 for all its faults is not a bad aircraft to fly on uh, although that's debatable amongst the av geek group who for some reason don't seem to like it I find it fairly quiet and fairly smooth myself but that may be just me so let's talk a bit more about the Airbus A330 Launched in 1992 with more than 1,500 built, Cathay Pacific deploys 18 of them on their regional domestic Asian routes, but by far with the most impressive fleet of 65 Airbus A330s, good old Turkish Airlines, which I tried in 2019 and was very impressed. 
But what you may be surprised to learn is that this aircraft is particularly popular with Aeroflot, Russian Airlines, and the Airbus 330 was very much a strategic choice for them when they were looking for a replacement of their aging Soviet airliners some years ago. When you buy a seat on this route, even on a wide body airliner, you're paying for a European business class product. So on this aircraft today, there is no business class. They have a premium cabin at the front, which is for business class passengers. And like I said at the start, I didn't pay for a business class ticket, so I've got no recalls, really. I mean, it would have been nice to get that business class seat, but the truth is that aircraft swaps happen. I don't know the reason. Maybe our original plane went tech. Or maybe, given that this aircraft is actually Iberia branded on the headrests, this is a sort of a hybrid aircraft they've developed specifically for this route because clearly the aircraft can take the cargo and at the same time it doesn't mean that one of Iberia's long-haul aircraft with the full flatbeds is tied up doing what is you know really a one hour and 50 minute flight that could be it so it may be that we'll see this quite a lot now between here and London and you all know ladies and gents how much I just love visiting the toilet with you all during a flight so here we are the gratuitous toilet film. Where would we be without it? And who are these two handsome devils? Well, each airline has its own respective CEO. Why do I mention it? Because a lot of people think that Level is owned by Iberia. It isn't. Last month in Patreon, we welcomed back Kieran. This month, we welcome back Joshua kind of feels like the family's back together again, a bit like aviation itself. So if you want to be part of the family, there's a link below. But how much is level on a long haul flight and what do they offer? I hear you ask. Well, it's your lucky day because I'm going to tell you. So I priced up a random route between Barcelona and Buenos Aires in South America in February 2022. It priced out, as you can see, about 1500 euro, which compares to where Europa's business class on exactly the same route on exactly the same date at two and a half thousand euro. So there is a price difference. Personally, I'd go Air Europa for the business class flatbed. That said, there's probably nothing wrong with level for 1500. In every other respect, it's a comfortable enough cabin. I mean, the seats feel comfortable. They're a bit stained. Uh, and the monitor that I've got is kind of one of those pull-out monitors uh, because I'm sat at the front where there's a bulkhead between me and business class or premium economy but uh, yeah the seat feels comfortable enough and uh, I don't know if that seat was blocked but I've got nobody sat next to me and it appears to be an otherwise fairly full flight so like I said I mean the main thing is for my Avgeek geek followers you may be spitting feathers and you may be annoyed for me because I didn't get the business class seat but don't be because you know the reality is that there's no comeback uh, like I said you're not buying a business class flatbed seat product on this route because it just doesn't exist they, they never they've never ever sold it either BA or Iberia as a business class product offering uh, a flatbed offering that is so I'm, I'm cool now I wasn't sure what to expect when I first saw it parked at the gate but uh, yeah it seems okay for a to our flight it's smoother and it's bigger than obviously flying on a 320 or a 321 so i'm happy with that i'll still get my five tier points <laughs> so i suppose we should take a look around the cabin other than the headrests everything else is level branded and this is clearly an airline set up as a leisure airline everything has a price everything is for sale as you can see they don't seem to be overly stupid prices but then again, what you do need to bear in mind is that you're probably not going to get much if you're flying on the basic economy package with level, even long haul. Touchscreen's quite decent, I have to say. It seems very responsive. It's got all the information I need and seems to have a really good range of movies to watch. I presume, although I couldn't find out, that the movies are included, even in economy, i.e. that you don't need to pay for them. But overall, I have to say, the entertainment system was pretty impressive. So we're about probably halfway through the flight now and 
just got a little cup of pineapple juice, uh, which is complimentary, I'd forgotten about that. And other than the fact I can't find the moving map on the screen, uh, do you know everything else is fine? It's not bad. I think it's interesting the cabin crew, well actually the flight crew, the captain came on and introduced himself a while ago and nobody's using branding. So nobody's, nobody's either saying level or Iberia. So when the captain came on he said welcome to this flight to Heathrow and the cabin crew also said welcome to this flight to Heathrow. So I think in reality they probably are level crew. So they can't call themselves Iberia. Or they don't want to call themselves Iberia. I don't know. But the crew, flight or cabin crew, just don't seem to know which airline they're flying for. So I'd have been annoyed if I'd say bought a long-haul ticket on Iberia to the States or South America somewhere and this showed up at the gate. Uh, then you'd have a very angry Neil on your hands. But like I said earlier, and I keep stressing it because it's true, it's a good point because I can understand some people would get upset by it. There is no comeback if they don't provide you with a flatbed seat on a one hour and 50 minute flight to London from Madrid because they never ever sell it as a full long haul business class product. It just so happens that the 320s and 321s don't meet the cargo demand between the two big cities. And that's the only reason they put the long haul aircraft once or twice a day on the route up to London. And you've got to bear that in mind. Uh, they're not doing it out of kindness <laughs> because they think you might like to try their long haul business class flatbed product. It doesn't work like that with Iberia. So as I sit back, relax and pop on some Paul Van Dyke, I must say, overall, despite my initial reservations, I probably would recommend Level Airlines. It is a basic leisure product. Do bear that in mind. Overall though, if it's cheap enough, I can't see anything wrong with flying level. just started the initial descent down into Heathrow now and it's been a nice enough flight you know it's disappointing that I didn't get the Airbus A330 of Iberia because that would have completed the whole collection on YouTube so I would have had all of the wide bodies 330 340 350 of Iberia but but hey ho that's just where the cookie crumbles when you do this kind of thing So just before I leave you in peace to enjoy the illuminations of West London and the landing into Heathrow, I just have one final request. If you're like the 80% of people who are watching this video who don't subscribe, please just take a moment to click like and subscribe. It makes all the difference to me and help me reach 2,000 subscribers. It would be really appreciated. Thanks a million. See you next time. Oh, and PS, despite extensive research, I still cannot find out why the Level A330 made an appearance in Madrid. So if anybody who works for Iberia or anybody in the industry knows, please do comment below. I am genuinely interested.